Good morning, fellow tech enthusiasts. Today, we'll be delving into the incredible world of Circuit Maker. Whether you're new to electronics or looking to enhance your skills, this tutorial is for you. We'll explore Circuit Maker's user interface, create our first schematic, and build a basic PCB layout. So, let's get started and turn those circuit ideas into reality. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the bell icon to stay updated. Let's get started. Now, to get started with Circuit Maker, of course, you'll need to download it. So head over to the altium.com website forward slash Circuit Maker, hit that download button, and get it installed. The first thing we need to do, of course, is create a new project. So I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to click on New Project. Then, of course, I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this YouTube uh, First Circuit. And I'm going to click on Create. It will take a few moments for this to bring itself together, and then you'll end up with a file structure over here. So the first thing we need to do is create a document, and that's how Circuit Maker likes to organize things. We basically get a PCB document and a schematic document. Naturally, you start off making a schematic before you progress onto the PCB. So I'm just going to right click here, and I'm gonna click on Add New to Project, and I'm gonna click on Schematic. Now it'll ask you for a file name here. I'm just gonna call this Tutorial 1, and click on OK. And then the document will be created and the view layout will change. And there we go, we now get a schematic interface. Now one of the first things that tripped me up in this was looking at this little panel here and not realising this wasn't where you inserted parts of components. This is instead a filter system. So this will only display whatever you click on. Right now we're on all objects so everything will be visible. So for the first part I would recommend really ignoring all this unless you really have a cluttered design. Now, to move around the page itself, you hold down the middle mouse button to zoom in and out, and you hold down the right mouse button to drag around. And then we can zoom into areas like this sheet title, which allows us to take some text, place it here, and then edit it. Now, the way this works is you have to press escape or right click in order to make it work and then double click on it to get to its properties. And then you can change the text. So we'll just call this tutorial one and we'll press enter. Now we've got a selection of colors as well. So if I want to make this text a little bit bigger, which is a bit more fitting and change the text to a nice black, I can do so using the properties panel and press escape to get out of stuff and then you can just drag it around to whatever position you need and that's a good first experiment um, getting some text on the page getting it positioned the way you want will give you a good feel for how the interface works so remember once you've finished dealing with something you press escape and then it will leave that object so what I've decided to create today is a basic minimal amplifier circuit, something you can plug a three and a half inch jack into and get some speakers. So this would be a fantastic project for some PC speakers, for example. And the first thing we need to do is actually get the part in. So we're going to click on part and this will then bring up a library search list. I'm going to search for the LM386 which is an amplifier circuit or an amplifier IC, I should say. It will then search the library and it will come up with some models for us. Now we've got two options. We got a surface mounted chip or we got a through hole chip. I'm gonna go through the through hole chip and I'm going to right click on it and I'm gonna click on place. And this will then allow me to place this symbol directly into the circuit diagram. 
Then I'm going to press escape once I've placed it and this will then move it to selection mode. Now the other component I'm going to need is going to be a three and a half inch jack. So I'm just going to type in 3.5 mm audio input and see if I can get some nice listings from the parts library. So we've got something a little bit mm, too much there. So we're just going to go 3.5 millimeter jack and half the battle of this is understanding what you should be putting in there. So as you can see we've got a few different uh, versions of this so I'm just going to scroll through and find what I like, click on the circuit um, or the component I should say and see if there's a symbol of some kind. This one seems fine so I'm going to right click and I'm going to place it. The next thing I'm going to need, of course, is a speaker. So again, we head over to the parts list and I'm going to look for a speaker and we'll see what components are available. And you basically do this until you have all the components you actually need. I'm just gonna go with this Adafruit uh, three watt speaker. We're gonna click on place and again, we'll place it on our document. Now remember, you can place multiple components, you just keep clicking, uh, but when you're done with it, you need to press escape to get out of that mode. Next, we need to place a nine volt battery. So again, we go to parts, you'll spend most of your life in the parts section looking for stuff. Um, so nine volt battery. Uh, this connector will do. So we'll just drag this battery connector here into the document and we'll place it up on top. And then we need to get some other basic components. Now, one of the things we need to add is a ground plane. So we're gonna click on power port here. We're gonna click on ground and we're going to insert the symbol. I'm gonna bring it in line with this battery here and now we've got a ground point. I also know we're gonna need a ground over here, we're gonna need a ground here, we're gonna need some ground points over here, one more here, and then two more over here. And that's all my ground points ready and prepared. Now the rest of this is basically finding all the other components I need and placing them on the document. So I'm gonna spare you all of that and I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. As you're placing components, as I have been, you'll come across a situation where you need to rotate that component. To do so, simply select it and then press space to rotate. Now that I have all my components placed on the sheet, what I need to do is set up the wiring. So this will end up being the traces on your board eventually, but right now we're just allowing our components to connect to each other. So we click on the wire icon over here, and then you simply click on the end of your component and you drag it to the point you want it to be located to. So for example, I'm taking this battery connector and I'm just drawing the wires down to the appropriate terminals. And I'm double checking the diagram. So it's gonna be like this. And it's to go to pin six. There we go. So now we need to connect these components across those points as well and connect them to the other wires. And that way we have the battery all connected. And basically it continues in this fashion. So for example, I'm gonna to go to pin one on my audio and I'm going to draw a line all the way to the ground point. So this is now the ground point and I want to feed in pin two and I want to take this into my volume. Whoops. If you ever make a mistake like I did, just press escape, then control Z. And that will undo whatever you've done. If you've gone too far, press control Y to repeat actions and the circuit will come up again. So that one was very wrong. So I'm going to try doing that one again. So again, click on wire, 
click on the pin out I want. I'm going to draw out to ground like so. I'm going to zoom in this time, holding down control and wheel mouse. I'm going to go to the second pin and I'm going to draw this to the top of our potentiometer. Then I'm going to connect our potentiometer down to the ground again. Next, this needs to feed into the plus area. So this will be pin three, just like that. And we need to bypass our circuit here and draw it to pin four. So I'm going to draw the wire um, from here, from pin four. And I'm going to take it all the way down to this ground point. And I'm going to get this capacitor. And basically, you continue in this fashion until you've connected everything up. And within a few moments, you'll have everything wired up the way it should be. And that concludes the making of our schematic. So now that we have our basic schematic built, I'm going to right click on our documents right here and I'm going to click on add to project and I'm going to click on PCB and this will allow us to create our PCB layout. If we give it a few moments of thought, it will ask me for a name. And just like that, I can then call this Tutorial 1 PCB and click on OK. And this creates a brand new document ready for us to start laying our components. Give it a few moments, it'll look like it's not doing anything, but it would eventually come up with a nice black screen for you. So now what we need to do is update it. Now we can navigate around this using the old control and wheel mouse and we can right click with the mouse to drag everything around but we really need to bring our components in. So what we're gonna do is click on project and then we're gonna click on import changes. This will then bring up a list of stuff so these are all our nets, which they call the wire. It's bringing in our list of components and it's bringing in this class here as well. I'm going to click on validate changes. As long as there's a check mark by everything, we can then click on execute changes. This will then import all the components into our PCB. So give it a few moments and it'll always put them off screen. So. Once you see everything appear here, click on close and then you can start placing everything onto your board. I always start with the brains of the operation, which will be the chip, and I try to place that in centre. Then I try to move around and find other components that I immediately recognise. And This appears to be the battery, I believe. Maybe it, no, it's a capacitor. I'm so sorry. Um, there, there's the battery. So I'm trying to find that battery component and connect it up here. Some of these components may be wrong. I think that capacitor is way too big for what I actually want in this circuit. That's okay. I can always go back to the schematic and change anything I need to. And it really is just a matter of dragging everything on the board until you have something that you're happy with. So again, I always start with the major components so I can visualize everything around, like the speaker element. I'm going to zoom in. Can be a little bit slow to respond sometimes, so have a bit of patience and don't panic and it'll all be fine. There we go. So I've now grabbed that speaker, I moved it over there. And of course we need the uh, jack as well. So this is the input jack. Again, I'm gonna zoom out using the wheel mouse. Again, it can slow down sometimes. I'm screen recording as well, so performance may not be optimal, um, but we got the basic components going. And 
we basically carry on dragging everything around until we have something resembling the circuit we produced in the layout we want. This stage can be a little bit confusing, so it's a good idea to swap between the schematic document originally and make sure you note the names of things. So that's C5, for example. So I know C5 needs to be sort of here, which allows me to go back in and then look for C5. There's C5. And again, I'm going to drag it in here. The variable resistor doesn't need to be all the way over there. So I'm going to roughly place it in line with the schematic. We had our port there, we had the variable resistor. Um, so let's try dragging that in line so it makes a bit more visual sense. Um, so we've got our port, then we have our variable resistor, um, which is right here, and that's VR1. So it's a good idea to pay label attention. We don't want to, for example, end up with VR2 over here and VR1 over there. Um, so even when you've, whenever you've got the same sort of component on the board, that can be a little bit confusing. Um, so I'm just going to drag it there. Um, I'm going to look for the next component in order. I think I've got C5 is right there. That's fine. Um, so let's look for C1 and bring it down here. Um, so I'm looking for C1. C1's already more or less in position, like so. Um, I'm also going to basically proceed in order until everything is visually similar. Um, it doesn't have to be similar, it will route between components, you can design it other ways. Um, but I'm assuming you're a beginner, and uh, if that's the case then keeping the same general layout will make it a little bit easier for you in the future. So we've got C7 and R2, so C7 and R2, uh, C7 and R2. So you see got that one flipped around, that should be there. And I want to see where R1 should be. So I'm just going to go back to the schematic and go hunt around for R1. Sometimes these labels can overlap. I believe that's R1 right there. There's only two resistors in this, as far as I'm aware, apart from the variable resistors. So yeah, so R1 should be on this side. And go back, and we just make sure R1 is on this side, and R2 is on this side. And then that makes a little bit more sense. And we'll drag the rest of the stuff in. You basically continue in this way until you have everything laid out the way you want it. And just like that, I have a very rough layout. Again, these capacitors are way too big. These can be changed by going back to the schematic and changing them out now. Um, but this isn't going into production. This is just a rough tutorial showing you how to position things. Um, so you can do a slightly better job than I have by selecting better components. Um, but I'm going to sort of lay this out so everything's a little bit closer to each other. We don't want things too close because you can get signal interference between components. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want a massive board where I don't need one. So I'm literally just going to drag these things around until I've got something a bit more sensible looking. And once I've done that, we'll get to tracing the roots. Because right now, these connections between everything um, is by no means the final route for all the wires. Um, I'm just trying to get everything a bit closer together for the circuit. Just like that. The other thing to bear in mind is that by having um, traces, you do add a bit of resistance to the circuit. So it's entirely possible by having too much space between things, you're actually adjusting the resistance between the components as well, which could affect your final 
um, circuit as well. So I'm just going to drag all this in. I'll get it a bit closer. But again, you've got to strike a balance, especially when you deal with logic circuits and circuits that are um, very susceptible to interference. If you have lines that are too close together, you can get cross talk between lines, which can again um, affect the circuit. This tends to be microcontrollers and other sensitive devices that have these issues. The other thing we should consider is the shape of our PCB itself. We've got a really big PCB here for what is essentially a small circuit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on uh, redefine board shape and I'm going to draw a polygon around the components. Now you can just have a straight up square board if you like. It's completely up to you. Um, I'm imagining this might be something uh, I'm going to put into um, a housing of some kind, so uh, the less space taken up, maybe the better. Uh, so I'm just going to draw around the edge of these components here. And you can do diagonal lines as well. And there we go. So we've got a PCB that that's that is that shape. I press escape to commit the changes and now we've got our PCB sized and we're basically using less PCB in our circuit. I could cut off this but I want to leave enough room for traces as well. So once I've done that I can then go to tools and I can click on auto root um, and I'm going to click on all and this will then attempt to root everything. I'm going to use a default two layer board. Um, you can use multi layers as well, uh, but I'm just going to click accept that and I'm going to click on root all and it will have a good old think. And now it's rooted everything um, around your circuit nicely. So I'm going to zoom in um, red and so, sorry, orange and blue wires indicate different layers they're on. Um, as you can see here, Blue is bottom solder, blue is bottom layer, so these traces will appear on the base of the board, whereas the orange here is the traces that appear on top of the board. So you may see some overlay like this one here, um, but you'll quickly find uh, that they're on different layers of the board, so it doesn't actually matter that they took the same route. But there we go, we have our basic PCB ready to print. Now, one of the other things you may wish to pay attention to is line thickness. So if I want to adjust these rails here, which will be quite thin right now, and make them thicker because they are delivering power, then I can just double click on them and I can type in a width and they will update that way. And I can just go through and get all the general widths I like until I'm happy with the result. So again, this is you can also select multiples, I believe. But you have to be careful not to select everything. So I'm just going to select these wires here very carefully. Inspector. And I can adjust these to, say, 30. And now we need to make sure it doesn't touch any other pads. So I'm going to reduce this down to 25 and 15. Whoops, that was a bit bigger than I intended. Let's try that again. And we're just missing the pad there. So that may be a bit too much, but we can always move it over if we want. And simply by clicking and dragging the part you want to click and drag. And again, same procedure as before. If I want to just select everything I want to have a bigger value I will just click around stuff and then I will go into inspector and I'll set it to the same 25 mil that my other wire is on and now the traces are less likely to heat up and burn out 
um, because they're too thin. Something that uh, should always have attention paid to. I'm going to continue the same design with this particular trace here. Um, and inspector. And I'm going to adjust this 25 mil as well. And again, make sure it's not touching tabs. So I'm just going to drag these out. I want to make sure there's enough space. There's Crosstalk isn't really an issue at this point, but again, it's something I always keep in mind as a general rule. And just like that, we can get the main power into the chip with a little bit more thickness on the, um, the traces. Inspector and 25 mil and enter. And there we go. So now the power lines are a little bit thicker. Um, signal lines, might want to put a bit of thickness on that as well, but you might increase resistance as well. So don't go too crazy with it. Um, speaker is the other thing that might have some power going through it. So these lines might be updated as well. Though I think these traces are probably fine for now. Um, the other thing you can do uh, then is output it. So once you're happy with your design and you're ready to go to manufacturing, click on the output tab. The first thing we need to do is run a design rule check. Um, run design rule check and it will give you some information about possible violations. Uh, apparently it reckons there's 19 things there. So um, width, constant track, top layer, uh, so it basically wants everything at 10 mil. So everything I just did, it doesn't like very much. So I can reduce all that to 10 mil and it will get rid of those particular issues for me. Luckily, a few control Zs is all I needed for that. So again, I can go back to the output and I can click on run design check and run design rule check. See what the rules are then. And as you can see, we've only got one issue now. Um, which is basically the height of something. Um, so it prefers 500 mil and um, it basically got a height constraint issue going on there. Um, so that's height constraint, small component, C2 Panasonic is broken. Um, so top layer height is actually okay. So basically that's because we've got a big capacitor on there, which I've mentioned before, um, that needs replacing. So now I want to send this off for manufacturing. So I'm going to right click on the project and I'm going to click on generate outputs. If I right click on the right one. There we go, so generate outputs. It will then have a good think and it will come up with a list of my circuits. If you're going to get these manufactured by a third party, then bit of materials is important. It will basically list all the components that you've added to the board, um, saying that this is what is required. It will basically output a CSV file or equivalent that you can upload to your manufacturer, and then they will run off and buy all the components and assemble them on your board. Now, as I plan to order this board and then solder everything myself, I don't need that. So the more important part for me is the fabrication. These are the Gerber files and the drill files. So I'm going to place a couple of ticks in those, as in that's what I need. Let's pay attention to the settings of our Gerber files. So I'm just going to click on configure and we should end up with another window. And there we go. So none of this matters too much, format and units, millimetres. That, that doesn't massively matter. So next we're going to click on layers. This is vitally important. These are our bottom layers, our labels and everything else. So we want our top layer, we want our paste, we want our solder. Uh, we want our top layer, bottom layer, and we want the paste solder as well. And we want the outline. Um, we might as well throw in the assembly top as well and uh, just make sure everything is there. Um, mirror will basically reverse everything so we don't want that ticked at all. 
Uh, the next important thing will be um, drill drawing. We've got to make sure that that's there. Then if we head over to advanced, nothing here is really important. You can basically forget it exists right now. Uh, we need to make sure that these two ticks are unchecked in advanced and we need to make sure that everything else um, is in relation to our drill files. So we're going to select that to be OK. Then we can go into our NC drill files, which will bring up some information for us to play with. And we've got formats here. As long as it's consistent with the other one, it should be fine. So we're just going to click on OK, and that should be good enough. And once you're happy with all the settings, you simply click on Generate which we will do now. It will have a good think as it assembles everything. Continuing to have a think. It likes thinking. It may ask to save and commit changes, so I've accepted that and uh, it's then going to say save to server. I'm going to click on OK. And now it's pushing the design. Uploading design. It's now running the bill of materials, Gerber files and NC drill files. You can see a progress bar at the bottom showing how it's going. Saving workbook. And then click on release. And OK. Uh, projects has been successfully released, so we're going to open it in the web browser. It will then launch a web browser for you and I can then show files and I can download my files. And if I open up that zip file, we see we got Gerber and we got the NC drill files. So everything is there ready for us to use. And of course the other file here in here we have the PCBA file, which contains our um, a list of um, bills. So this is our bill of materials file. This is what tells the, uh, the supplier everything you need to add to your board. And with that, you basically have your first circuit design and ready to send to someone like PCBWay to have them actually manufacture. That brings us to the end of today's circuit design journey. I hope you all found it as exciting and educational as I did. Before I wrap things up, I want to take a moment to express my immense gratitude to PCBWay. Their support has been invaluable in making this video content possible and keeping our community engaged with learning. PCBWay is not only a leading provider in PCB services, but also has an incredible supporter of the DIY electronics community. And guess what? It's some great news for you. You guys pcb way is offering a five dollar free prototype order which as you can see will get you 10 pcbs to play around with but if that's not enough for you then you can also use the link in my video description to get ten dollars off instead so why wait go ahead and check out pcb ways website and um start generating your PCB so you can start having your own projects finished. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Please remember to give me a like and share it with your friends if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more electronic and computer tutorials and my live streams. Thank you once again for joining us today. Um, and a huge thanks again for PCB Way and their support. Remember, keep learning, keep building, and more importantly, keep having fun with electronics. Until next time, happy tinkering.